Welcome to episode 711. If you build it, they will come, Jet, and shut you down. So question for the podcast I have. Did you pay your parking fee when you went to Bell Bank Park? Or did you just skip the tab because you assume when you went in, they didn't really get your license? So, so supposedly, um, when you go in and you don't download the app and pay your parking fee, they're supposed to get you on your taxes or something or send you a bill and charge you interest. Are you one of the ones? Comment. Let me know. Did you skip on the bill? And are How they going to come after you? you? I don't even know if they're going to come after you because they might be in jail. Who knows? I don't know. Um, we have a lot to cover today. We're going to obviously talk about the Bell Bank fiasco and uh, what just came on the news and uh, see who else is going to pick that up. Uh, we're going to talk, talk about the U.S. women's national team, U-17s. They lost to Nigeria in the quarterfinals and because Nigeria has um, the best youth soccer club development program in the world. Um, they pay lots of money. They get a lot of, uh, English accent coaches over there and, um, they have academies and, uh, MLS next, or I mean, Africa next or whatever you want to call it over there. They, they're very organized over there. Uh, so organized. They beat all those U S women national team players of the U 17s. That's a problem. Football is becoming soccer. We'll talk about that and youth soccer robbery. And we have another pedophile. We have video of a moose who interrupts a soccer game, a youth soccer game, and almost goes after a mother. We're going to show you that video and uh, a youth soccer update where I coach Jet. Hey, Jet, how are you doing? Good. All right, so Jet, Jet, the mic is in front of you. I don't know where you're looking. Uh, I know, but I'm right here. Right here, buddy. It barely can what? see me. Yeah, because you're not well, being in the, the here. camera. You're fine. Jet. If if you just right here, they'll see you. And if you, if you look at me and we can talk. You're afraid? I Jet. see you. You're huge. You're now, well, when you lean, you're out. But if you stay there, you're in. Look. All right. Okay. Jet's in. We can start the show. And um, how's your soccer going? Good. Yeah, you had a killer shot today and a great uh, pass for an today. assist. Uh, well, yesterday. What was the score? Uh, three to one. Three to one? Against the top team. Jet, you guys got I, I thought it was like 10. It was like 10 to one. Oh no! It was like it was. I think it was seven to one or eight to one. Yeah, seven to one. It was seven to one. And he had a killer shot. It was pretty amazing with his gifted left shot. So uh, it didn't left shot. Did I, I think I just cussed left shot? Um. Yeah. And uh, El Rojo's back. El Rojo. 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 It's good. Dude. Yeah, Jack, you had a game on Friday, and on Sunday you tied on Friday. You lost today? Yeah. Sorry, man. How do you feel about that? Do you, you want to talk about it? No. Okay. Well, that's all we have for El Rojo, I guess. Um, and uh, he cramped. He cramped on Friday. Congrats on the cramping. Oh, he cramped terrible. at church. Oh, oh yeah, he I cramped at church. He was blessing the sacrament and tried to take a knee, and he was cramping. Which was awesome in front of the entire oh, congregation. That was, that was so bad. It was awesome. I love that. I had a feeling it was going to happen, too. Well, if you think it. I forgot what you say. It must be true. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, let's let's talk about Bell Bank Park. Uh, default threatens owners. Hold on Bell Bank Park. And this is coming from... Hold on, I want to make sure I cite this correctly. Scott Shoemaker... <gasps> Hey, Shoemaker. Um, Mrs. Shoemaker was my kindergarten teacher, and now you know. So this is out of East Valley Tribune or eastvalley.com or whatever paper that is. It hasn't been picked up by the Republic or anyone else. I think it's a hatchet job on these poor guys because they had they had a Trump rally a couple weeks ago, and then since they had a, a Trump rally, the, the SEC is now uh, trying to arrest everybody. The organization that built the $280 million, 320 anchor youth and amateur sports complex known as Bell Bank Park is in Southeast Mesa is in default of its loan that covered the project. <gasps> shocker. And it, it's not much of a shocker because um, all the people that took those jobs, you know, you're going to make 90000 you can make 80000 you can make 120000 you're going to be the director of soccer, you can be the director of beach volleyball, you can be the director of whatever. Um, but they said, oh, but we can't pay you for like six months. And they took it anyways. That should have been an indicator of something. And Jack, feel free to just totally 
destroy the show with random random stuff. Ran, random stuff. We have so many things you never use. A formal notice issued October 18th by a bond trustee, OMB Bank to investors states that Legacy has missed monthly payments on interest and principal, failed to submit audits and financial statements, and has unpaid construction company liens on the property. Well, that's a problem. Over the summer, at least 10 subcontractors that worked on the project filed liens totaling, totaling millions of dollars against a property owner for non-payment for services, according to the Maricopa County Recorder's Office. Office. Legacy Cares doesn't own the land, but leases it from Pacific uh, Proving LLC, a joint venture between William Levine and um, Art Moreno, owner of the LA uh, Angels, Major League Baseball team, which is crazy because um, the Angels, uh, oh no, no, Oakland A's different. I was thinking of Moneyball. I'm like, that guy doesn't have any money. But um, he owns Angels. Levine and Moreno were partnered in the billboard company Outdoor Systems, which they sold it uh, to Infinity Broadcasting for $8.7 billion in 1999. Pacific Proving uh, purchased 1,800 acres of the General Motors testing facility, which was provided land for Mesa's tremendous expansion in the southeast. Now it gets interesting. So the, apparently they, they're doing this whole project with seven and a half interest points. I mean, what is the math on that? Mathematicians comment. Let me know. Uh, seven and a half percent on 280 million. What do we got there? Jack, do it. How do you do that? So you take 280 million times 0.78, right? Comment math, um, uh, math people out there. Comment. Yeah. So what is interest on what is 7.8% interest on $280 million? Like, and how are they even making that money back by creating that thing? Because everyone goes there, drives there, doesn't pay for parking. And um, I know we went and uh, we paid. I don't know. How dare you? You know, you, you got to stay with the doing? show, man. What there you go. What are we doing? Uh, right yeah. Well, so it's a 320 anchor youth amateur sports. I don't know how they're paying for any of this, but I'm I'm actually on the um, I'm on EastValleyTribune.com where the story came from. So this is what it, he said, um, and they're talking of, uh, to uh, so Griffin pointed out. Oh, wait, who's Griffin? Where is it? Oh, mean? so Griffin, an account accountant for major firms before becoming an investor, doesn't think the Mesa project is capable of generating the revenue needed to cover its current obligations. He said the revenue potential and economic benefits of destination sports facilities like Bell Bank Park have been overhyped to communities across the country. That's How also dare been, you? That's also been true in the East Valley, where Mesa and Queen Creek officials have been especially enthusiastic about this park with the future uh, potential, the magnet for visitors and um municipalities and many other things. So, but this is where it gets goofy. Gr Griffin said this pop up um, industry of creating this, they borrow, they finance with munic municipal bonds. And he thought that 7.5 interest rates offered were really high for bonds. You think it's really how uh, high for everything. You imagine if we uh, got this home loan for our home was at seven and a half percent versus 3.2. I mean, it's a big deal. That's a lot of money. So someone's going to get arrested. So what do you think? Comment, let us know what's the situation here. And what's interesting is I actually made a phone call to the director of soccer over at Bell Bank wanting it to rent their championship field for a potential championship game. And they never got back to me. I emailed, never got back to me. I see why. Because they have other problems. Because our measly $3,000 rental agreement or whatever it might have been doesn't even put a dent on anything. And all the people parking over there and not paying. That is just so mean. How how do you do that? How, how dare you? How can you possibly 
punish those poor people. Uh, and, and how do they erect this thing? We were always talking about, so what's going to happen, Jack, I have no clue what's going to happen. So now these guys will probably get arrested. I don't know. It's just an article. If they get arrested, do they, it's going to shut down because no one's getting paid. Um, yeah. What's going to happen? Does anyone out there in the internet know anything? What is going to happen to, to what's going on over there? I don't know. I don't think it'll get shut down. Well, well, think about it, Jack. That, that, how many people do you think it takes to just turn the lights on there and manage that thing? What do you think? Like three thousand people. Ooh, maybe three thousand. Seriously, what do you think? Like, I was thinking hundreds. Yeah. Thousands. Okay, so if there's hundreds of employees, like you know the ones that like. Uh, they, they do have some grass fields. They have to cut that. Maybe they don't cut that anymore because they're not probably playing the, paying the landscapers and picking up trash, all that stuff, cleaning out the bathrooms and stuff. Uh, if you're not able to clean the bathrooms because you can't pay them, it's unsanitary and you shut it down. The city will shut it down. Can't they find just like another person to pay for that? A billionaire? Maybe. Well, they're going to have to. It's going to shut down. Sometime. What's so funny, Jet? What is funny, Jet? Tell me everything. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's what happened. So, yeah. The, and I don't want to just let this story go, but I'm sure by next week, someone's going to pick it up and do further investigation and find out what the heck is going on. I don't know. Um, let's move on. Football is football. After the kick... Casey Legg did everything he could to sell a roughing the kicker penalty. The effort was unsuccessful, but it made for an incredible funny moment. Prior to prior, what what's that, Jed? Ow. Ow. Prior to his time with the Mountaineers, Legg was a soccer guy. The West Virginia native ca- uh, captain or captained his high school soccer team as a junior and senior. And his club team won state uh, state title in 2017. Let's play that uh, kicker dive. All right, so here it goes. Kicks it, and the guy's rolling it. Oh, my ankle! Oh! Oh! And he's holding his other yeah, leg. I was about to say. Wrong leg. And yeah. his knee. That happened there, so. Uh, he's all right. And uh, he's fine. They, they so, l- leg didn't hurt his leg. That's yeah. what happened to us with... Uh, the other team, he got slide tackled, but he grabbed a different foot. He's pretending. He's a pretender. Yep. Well, here's a video of a moose interrupting a youth soccer game in Wyoming. And soccer is paused. Pause. Here comes the moose. Oh, my gosh. He's running. Which way is he running? After children. And the camera person. Oh, uh, you're the worst. Uh, she should have stuck with it. It's just a baby moose. Jet. And that's a baby moose. Could you fight that moose? Oh, they, they get they get like eight feet tall. That was only like six oh, or seven yeah, feet. When we were going bow and arrowing, and our head was huge. Yeah, we need to take them out. I wanted to move to Wyoming, and mo- uh, mother says no, and apparently that's why, because of running moose. I didn't know we had that. Did she kind really of issue. say no? Do you want to move to Wyoming? I would love to move to Wyoming. Let's go. Sold. I know you're watching this, Mom. Cameron's are moving to Wyoming to find the moose. Here we are. Well, sp- speaking of paid to play with in the U.S., Hillburn man arrested for allegedly embezzling over ninety five thousand from a soccer club. <gasps> yeah. Shows Following a six month investigation. Uh, the police arrested a 35-year-old Hilburn man on a chart that he embezzled, embezzled over 95000 from the Rampapo Valley Soccer Club. How do you pull that off? I mean, how much money is going to use soccer where some random club next to Moose, they can embezzle $95,000? Jan Garcia was charged with grand larceny. And criminal possession of stolen property. It is alleged that between 2020 and 22, he stole the money from the club. Well, it was COVID. He was uh, uh, arrested on Friday, October 21st, arraigned and released without bail, pending a future court appearance. How do you feel about that? 
Have you been robbed by your yes. soccer club? Have you? Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. What's Jamie Nice Wonder say? Um, he said. What? I remember when you were asking questions about this park when it was first made. Not many did, and now it could be a money pit for the owners. I'm curious who the owners consulted before building. Huh? And the owners were some young guys that were too big for the britches, and it's like they don't even own the own the land. They leased it. Hey, we're going to lease your land at seven and a half percent, which is a silly time. I mean, I would you would never want to take a loan on anything at seven and a half percent facts. And I, I, I'm a moron when it comes to money, but I know that's probably not a good thing to do. I think it must be true. That's right. Sing it, Jack. Um, former. Oh yeah. On to the next thing. Another pedophile, former youth soccer coach in Adrian accused of sex crimes with children a former director of youth soccer program in Adrian has been, that's in Texas, I think, accused of criminal sexual conduct and other crimes involving a child. U.S. Marshals, I don't have a picture on this guy, do I? No. I, they haven't released it yet. Let me search him up. Search him. Um, yeah, search him up and then, uh, okay. oh, he's what's, just going to internet. What's his name? Um, pedophile. Pedophile. His name is um, Olin Hassan. Okay, is that Who, on the thing? It's, is it on the Google? Yeah. It, he's he's awaiting extradition from Texas back to Michigan where he previously worked at a youth soccer club. That's where they got him. Uh, so he was in Dallas and he's been sent back. He was a former vice president of sales and marketing of Cornerstone Health Care Group. Vice president, a rapist. The business reached out to CBS 11 and confirmed. You got a picture of him? I don't know. What do you mean you don't uh, know? It's multiple people. Is well, it? yeah. Well, they're all pedophiles. Yeah. Hey, put it on the oh, screen. Is it this guy? I, well, Jack. What do I do? Go go on the screen. Do you see the no the top middle? Top. Middle. You put your cursor over me. Put oh, see my okay. hand right up there. See that thing that shows oh. a computer? Click that, and then click on the thing. Yeah. You are bad at this. Zoom out. Zoom in. I don't know how to zoom out. Zoom Use your out. mouse. We're in a we're in a blue screen here. I don't know. You are so screen. bad. Get get off this. You're the worst. Well, you're Thank average. You, what are you doing? Oh, no, no. You click on the camera. Oh, I got it now. Well, you you just got. All right, click on it. Now you, you ruined the whole show. All right, just put it in camera right there. There you go. Okay. Well, that's a good thing because we don't want to put Is it? like a random person up there. That's not him. Oh yeah, we'll get sued for everything. Possibly. Yeah, you could. So um, he, he so he's going to he's going to nail for the following one count of child sexual abuse activity, a 20 year year felon uh, felony, two counts of using a computer to commit a crime, one being a 20 year a 20 year felony, three counts of uh, CSC two. I don't even know what that is. 15 years felony, one count of children uh, accosting for moral purposes, a four year felony. Five counts of child sexual abuse, uh, abuse of material, possession, four-year felony. One count of dis, uh, distributing sexual material to a minor, a two-year. That's only a two-year felony? And one count of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's only 90 days. And I'm, um, yeah, he has a problem. If, if, if this was California, it'd be a slap on the wrist. It's okay, pedophiles. You can survive here. It's California. Come to California. California, California. Youth soccer update. So, all right. That's what we all been waiting for. Not Bell Bank. Youth soccer update. For the ones that don't know, I'm coaching again. And it's been eight years. And I, I don't like coaching. Club. Not a fan. It's not fun. Um, I went back and it's worse. It might be the same. But I'm pretty sure it's the, it, it, it's It's horrible. I have turned the corner with this team, I thought. And we are, uh, we're, we're, we're playing these activities. And, and listen up for you coaches out there. If you want to find a way to develop kids, assuming it's an orphanage and there's no parents involved, you can manipulate the game and teach the kids in the game strictly through math. So I got a clicker, the baseball, a, a pitch counter for... 
uh, baseball Pass. for Passing. for each team home and away. I guess uh, I just I use it for the guys um, on Jets team, and we just create we create a field half field line, and I was just having them uh, play to. 20 or, or 30 or 100 depending on the game so the one of the games we do is you remember any of the games jet what, okay so I, I'll, I'll say one point for every pass in your defensive half and how many points in this in the attacking half uh two two and then a goal is one point and then but but pass, but if you score you, after passing 10 no, times no 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 what, when you score you get the ball back mm-hmm. so you, you still get to add points and when you pass 10 times and then score then you get, I think, points. Yeah, we did that, I think, once. But uh, the game we did last time was I would give them uh, one point for every pass in sequence. So their first pass in a row is worth one. Their second pass in, in a row was worth two, three, four. So if they got eight passes in a row, it would be worth eight. So their seventh, I'd be clicking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They got the eighth pass and one, three, four, six, seven, eight. It keeps compounding. And so they got really excited. And they were playing beautiful soccer. I was mani- manipulating the game strictly through math. And it was so beautiful. And I was like, I was so excited about this game we just had. And I totally forgot about the uh, equation of parents that stress out these poor kids. Like, it's like these parents are like, they have to like, they have to have success right now. And they, they won't let learning happen. They think they can influence their child by giving them the secret information. So they're, they're just like to the side. They're like, oh, so you should do this when the ball comes over. You need to kick it. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm wanting these guys just take a touch, look up, spin, turn with the ball, get points. We do points. I have all my parents recording every uh, touch they take on the field uh, and then every pass they uh, make. So how many passes, Jet, do you need to get for your first award? A hundred. hundred. So once he gets a hundred game passes, he'll, he'll get an award. And then how many touches do you need in a game? Dribbling touches. I think a thousand. 400. So that's the first level. And that's the focus we have for them. But it doesn't matter if the sideline parents are trying to manipulate the game. I had to scream at two parents during that. And it's just, it's so nerve wracking. It's so hard, but I have a conviction. I'm going to stick with it. I, I, I want to be able to coach. I had one parent and hopefully he's watching right now. Um, I'm coaching. I'm putting all this time and energy and I'm actually being creative and thinking and trying to get these players to develop and the practices are beautiful. If you saw practice, you're like, Oh my gosh, these guys are amazing. And then it's game time. It's, it's not even the same team because I have the parents freaking out, get, telling the kids what to do, like kick it, shoot it. I, oh, I, I had a parent right behind me. I'm not kidding. And everyone knows how I am. I, I want take a touch, look up, make decisions. Don't ever just kick it out. Problem solve. Play like they do in the EPL. Oh, oh, they're not EPL. I know, but we're not playing another EPL team. Play like the ones you watch on TV. What? Why wouldn't you? Every decision matters. This parent behind me said, "I couldn't believe it." He goes, "Hey, hey when you're when you, when you're under pressure like that, just kick it out of bounds." What? Why? That's crazy. Like, when are they allowed to play soccer? When, when are they going to be able allowed to escape pressure? When are they, well, we'll just wait until we have tryouts for high school varsity, you know, whatever. I'm like, what are you doing? It's simple math. And these parents, some of them, a lot of the parents are buying in, um, but we get a couple new ones and they're just not understanding. Like, they have no idea. And I'm, I'm going to toot my own horn. I'm a horrible college coach. So bad I fired myself and brought someone else in. But youth, youth soccer, I'm freaking brilliant. Like, literally brilliant. I can get kids of any level, any athletic ability to be able to solve problems and become a player. I, I'm, I'm legit. I'm an exercise science physical education major from ASU. When ASU was the number one exercise science program in the country, I learned uh, directly from Dr. Pangrazy, which is one of the top uh, professors in the world. I, I was just fortunate. I, I got to learn how to teach uh, kids how to go through the component method as far as how to get them to learn how to do movement and break it down step by step and how to really find a way to allow 
kids to be able to be in an environment that they can actually have success and not use direct things like work harder versus allow failure, allow them to think. And I'm like, you, they have no idea how good they have it. I'm a freaking brilliant. So brilliant, I quit. I quit. Eight years, I'm like, I'm, not, I'm like, I've proved my point. I've taken, taken players that were all cut from other teams and got them where they're the best team in the state. And when I say best team in the state, we beat the number one team in the state. We, we did, did amazing things with average. I didn't recruit. I just took whatever they gave me. And f- these parents ha- are going to interject. I work all h- hard all week to get these kids ready. And then the parents who are not there dealing with what I'm doing are going to interject their ideas. Like, what, like, who are you? It's so frustrating. Like, wh- this is what I do. That was my major. I was a physical education teacher. Teacher of the year, by the way. And I was allowed through Dr. Heck got approval to teach soccer to kindergarten through fifth, five days a week for two years. I was allowed to do that. I didn't have to do the curriculum. I did soccer only because I was fascinated. How do I get a five-year-old to do a back cut? How do I get a six? And that's what I did every day trying to find out how do I do this? How do I teach? How do I get in the mind of a child? That's what I did. I in- integrated myself into that environment, but some random, a uh, 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 Dad or mother had a baby. Oh, well, that's hard. Had a baby, and therefore they're brilliant, and, and they're they're gonna interject their tactics. It's it's seriously insane. And you know who you are, and I will yell at you nonstop. And next time you're gonna coach your child, I will pull your child off. I will send them to to you and I'll say, Hey, here's your team of one. Take that team of one and move on. You can't save them all. I love, I love coaching kids, but the parents get involved. I'm sorry. It's a package deal. It's family. So if you can't allow me to do my job and by the way, I do it for free. I refuse payment. I I won't even take payment because I want zero influence, but it doesn't matter. I still feel the same pressure. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got to yell at this guy. He might punch me in the face. So be it. It's insane. Let me do my thing. For reek. Anyways, how many questions I got out there? Oh, oh you suck. This podcast sucks. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, Aaron said, if a kid can't actually receive the ball, should you skip pass and just dribble like Neymar? No. If a kid can't actually receive the ball, what's that? What? No, so what, what he's basically saying is like, if no one's open, dribble. Should you dri- yeah. Dribble, dribble. So my rules are very simple. If you don't have a pass, can't find it, based on your situation of seeing it, because everyone's on a different timeline, dribble, lose a dribbling, trying to find opportunities to find that. You, we, you have to, it has to be a decision-based environment. But it is, decisions can't be made if mom and dad or grandpa or whoever else they brought to the game interject Because it's sports, therefore they can interject. This is youth soccer. This isn't this isn't the cardinal. This isn't NFL or Major League Baseball where you get to have eight beers and just scream randomly. It isn't that. Even though you you snuck on some alcohol at Fear Farm because it's the wild wild west there, doesn't mean just because you're drunk you're able to interject. It's annoying. It's so bad. So bad. And then, then I feel the pressure. Oh, I, I need to talk more because I get to over talk to parents. It's so bad. I just want to sit there, evaluate so I can fix it on, on Monday. But you can't. I, I, it's just too many distractions. It's the hardest job. I mean, volunteer gig that there is. And, and I understand what the next level is. I get it. I coach the number one team in the country the highest scoring team in the country who has the least amount of goals against them, who has the least amount of cards. Why? Because we have the ball the whole time. They're usually kicking us. We're not kicking them. What do I know? Golly. Anything else? Uh, one thing. Megan, she, why are you trying to make me more angry? 
With my anger, I will slap her to death. Megan Rapinoe always comes on the show. So um, a- any questions or concerns or comments? Was I too loud? Maybe. I think you were really loud. I was loud and angry. Uh, hopefully, I'll show this video to my parents. But um, we have a message to Rylan Cameron. That So Rylan Cameron is my nephew. It's Jet and Jack's uh, cousin. And uh, he is um, has a, a brain tumor. Number, that, number 23, by the way. Number 23. It looks just like Jet, by the way. So it looks just like him. So um, he's going to surgery tomorrow and um, to remove a brain tumor that's causing him to have uh, repeat uh, seizures. And, um, you know, we're, we're wishing you, uh, Rylan, the best of luck. We're going to be praying for you. Um, you got this. You're, he's a tough kid. Um, but we're, uh, yeah, we, we love you. We wish you the best luck. Um, uh, no, he plays football Yeah, football. and, and we're going to actually close this video with, uh, Ryland's touchdown pass in, uh, one of his last, uh, pop Warner football games. That was a great throw. He's a heck of an athlete. Um, and Rylan, you got this. We love you. Um, you you'll 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 uh, you'll beat it. You'll be back on the football field, tearing it up, and then you get to tell the story of what you went through and and uh, how cool to be able to handle adversity and get through it like you will. And uh, there's some there's bigger things than screaming at kids from the sideline. I mean, why can't we just chill? There's this life is it should be just chill. I mean, every imagine every Saturday going to youth sports and just everyone has a freak out. I, I was talking to Jack, I was talking to Lay and his mother, and she gets so nervous. So I was having a conversation with her. I'm like, you know, she can't even watch the game. She was so nervous. So I'm like, about yeah. what? Just like she's she she's I don't know. Eh, just typical mother thing. Um but yeah, and I think we all feel it. Um, but I'm a big believer of start reading the power of now. Just be here. Stop thinking about the future because that brings stress and anxiety. Don't think about the past because that brings what, Jack? No, that's future um, depression. So, um, well, yeah, because the past actually happened or whatever. But don't think about it. There's no point of thinking about anything. Just be here right now. And, uh, yeah, and life's easier because you, all you do is just look at the wonderful world we have and the many blessings we have, and that's the way life should be. And then maybe I won't be so angry towards my parents. But they, they do ruin everything. There's no doubt. But you can uh, find us on iHeartRadio, Google Play, iTunes, or wherever else podcasts are found. Oh, we're on Anchor. We went back to Anchor, which goes everywhere else. Go to CoachCamera.com for no access to anything because I, I, I don't even go on there anymore. But we'll be back next Sunday for a Halloween special. Oh, the Bears. We have a playoff game on Tuesday. We're playing Glendale Community College, 6 p.m. Um, at Phoenix College. And if we win, we'll play the championship game at Phoenix College this Saturday. Or, yeah, this upcoming Saturday. Um, assuming the win, women's win two, we'll play at four. And then the women will play at seven or 7.30, something like that. But we'll uh, obviously just, you know, Follow us and and we'll uh, you'll know more information about that. What's interesting about it, not to make this podcast go forever, but Phoenix or Phoenix College on the men's side, Mar- Maricopa Community Colleges for soccer, the championship uh, in the thirty seven years this conference has been going on for Maricopa, it we've only had one championship game ever held um, in Maricopa in Phoenix, and that was in two thousand thirteen, uh, where we took on Yava Pine Lost and Penalty Kicks. But no, you weren't. And there's 2000. Oh, wait, 2013. Yeah, you were. Oh, no, you weren't. You were, you, you were, you were with a heavenly father. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we take care of business Tuesday, we'll host the second championship game ever in Phoenix, not on the women's side, but on the men's because the competition's a little bit different, um, because of, 
this guy. He caused problems. But he's retired. Anyways, got a comment? I got two, yeah. Uh, Chris asked if the game's streamed. It will not be streamed. I could stream it, but I'm not going to. Um, Because I don't want to. But Nationals, we should end up going Nationals since we're preseason. I mean, we're number one right now. So technically, if we screwed up on Tuesday, we'd probably get an at-large bid. Uh, Anyways, so next question. Um, When are you going to show some footage of you coaching your son's team? Oh, my gosh. So I I could do that. <laughs> I could be like hidden and no, show the parents. Yeah, Sean, you're you're right. Um, we just talked about that. So I'm getting this. Um, I need something to follow. Uh, Jets out. Jet is just been too long. We'll see you at practice. Jet. See you on Monday. So Jets out. Um, so I I I have a mic system, but now I need a camera that follows me. So uh, I found one. And, yeah, I'm going to record every practice and uh, games and document. I'll be your cameraman everywhere for it's not $5 an hour. Sold. Actually? 5 bucks an hour? Yeah. Make it 10 No. We agreed on 5 $7. Any other questions? No. Yeah, Sean, I am working on I do have footage, so I, I got to work on blurring faces because I can't show uh, youth. Um, but, yeah, it's, I don't know. I want to document it all because if, if I can pull this off and get the bad news bears functional and these parents functional um, and to believe that there is a process of learning to allow failure. I mean, what kind of life are you? You imagine, Just think about your own parents as an adult. You have a job. You do these things. You imagine if someone's over your head telling you what to do, screaming, yelling, uh, uh, how can you learn? How can you function? And it makes no sense. Why can't we just chill and just, you know, t- take a, sed- a sedative and just chill? I- I'm a proponent of marijuana. Uh, eat some edibles and chill the freak out and just chill. F- for the kids. For the kids. Do it for the kids. Any other questions? No. All right. Well, this is Coach Cameron's podcast, and I, I don't know. I approve this message. All right. Vote. Peace. Unless you-